Hi, and welcome to Complete and Cast, the official podcast for Complete and Box video games. Today in episode 46, I am solo, no Parker this time. I know, I know, it's a tough day for all of us. So today, uh, we're sitting in mid-October, we're about six six to eight weeks away from the PlayStation 1 Classic uh, release. I know it's a very uh, novel idea, how did Sony even go ahead and come up with that idea? It's fantastic, they are so brilliant in their originality, right? Okay, so obviously they took the idea off of Nintendo coming out with the NES and SNES Classic, and there's heavy rumors that the N64 Classic will be coming out soon. So, um, the PS1 Classic coming out with 20 games. It's going to be 100 bucks in early December. They have announced four games so far. I actually forgot to write them down, but if I remember correctly, it's Final Fantasy VII, Tekken 3, Jumping Flash, and Ridge Racer R4, I believe. And so far... There's a lot of people going around, you know, saying that they don't super, super like the game list so far, and I can't disagree. I find that, like, if you're only going to have 20 games on there, Ridge Racer is already a waste of, of a game. I understand it's a Sony-made game, but, you know, hmm. And Jumping Flash is not a game that you would particularly, although it's a pretty fun game, it's not one that you would, you know, put do synonymous with the PS1. So today in this podcast, I am going to go over what my perfect list of the 20 games to put on the PS1 Classic uh, would be. Now, I'm going to start with a little criteria. This is not a best of list. By no means is this my top 20 PlayStation 1 games. I tried to look at it when I came up with this list that it's not necessarily the best games or my favorite games, but the games that define the PlayStation 1. I would go as far to say that maybe four or five games on this list, I'm not even the biggest fan of, just because of their genres, but I understand how important they are for the system, and I understand that they have the right to to be on there. Um, And like I said, when I was coming up with this list, I tried to encapsulate what the PlayStation 1 is. You know how they'll have those questions like, what are your 10 Desert Island games? You get 10 games to play for the rest of time. I kind of looked at this like, okay, if I could make 20 games that if someone never heard of the PlayStation 1 before and they were like, well, what's the PS1 about? That you could pick this up and you know, you have you have what is essentially the PlayStation 1. Again, not necessarily the 20 best games, because that would be a little um, biased on the genres. Uh, that's another point. I tried not to go too crazy on each genre. PS1 is well known for being uh, one of the best two systems all time for uh, RPG games, role-playing games. Usually people say the Super Nintendo or the PS1 was the golden age of uh, RPG games. I could have easily had 10 to 12 of the 20 games be RPG games, but I tried to keep it uh, each genre to a minimum so we could get again a full picture of everything that was available, because I like my, might like RPG games, but you might not. And you might like racing games, but I might not. So I tried to find a nice uh, nice mixture here. So again, just to make sure for all your listen, it's not necessarily the best games, and it's not necessarily my favorite games. It's what I feel would make a full and complete PS1 classic. One more thing to mention real quick. Um, I'm going to throw out the idea of... Um, Sony having to get rights to any games. Uh, I understand that legally it's very complicated. And for instance, if you wanted to have, say, um, you know, Mega Man, you'd have to contact Capcom and get the rights to, to use it on that. Let's just pretend that rights don't exist or they're able to get the rights for everything. One other thing to mention, the PlayStation 1 Classic so far, the controllers that come with it don't have analog sticks. I'm going to assume that we do have analog sticks because some of the games, uh, you know, use predominantly or only the analog sticks. So let's get started uh, then. So there were six games that I couldn't quite get on the list, but I felt was, um, I felt should be uh, mentioned. Uh, Let's uh, go at these in alphabetical order. The first one that just missed the cut would be Einhander. Einhander is a really cool, futuristic, uh, side-scrolling shooter, kind of like a mech side-scrolling shooter. Very tough-to-find game. If you never heard of it, it's because it's honestly very rare. 
It's a, it's a Square Enix game, and it's just it, it's a nice mixture between like the old school and the new school style um, shooter games. Next up, you have Final Fantasy Tactics. I'm not even personally the biggest fan of Final Fantasy Tactics, but I realized how important it was for the system, and tactic-based RPGs were definitely, you know, at some of their best for the PlayStation 1. Uh, the third of the ones that just missed the cut, we have Klonoa. Uh, Klonoa is a really, really fun, we call them 2.5D uh, platformer games. Um, your standard old school Mega Man's would be, of course, a two-dimensional game, and then say something like Sonic Ad uh, Adventure would be a three-dimensional game. Klonoa is a little bit different because you're always pressing right on the D-pad, uh, but sometimes you're kind of going just left or right, and sometimes the screen will make it look like you're going like up and down. So although it's technically a two 2D game, it has a lot of 3D elements. Very fun. <coughs> Excuse me. Very unique. Fourth of the ones that just missed the cut, we have Legend of Dragoon. Uh, a lot of people back in the day looked at this as a poor man's Final Fantasy, but it really holds up on its own. Uh, just like a standard, I would say it's, um, for those who haven't played it, its best equivalent is Final Fantasy IX, which of course is a fantastic game as well. Uh, four disc game, tons of gameplay, big, big old story. It's, it, it, it's very quintessentially PS1. Uh, next up of the ones that just missed the cut, we have Mega Man X4. Uh, I feel like when people talk about Mega Man games for the PS1, this is generally the one they mean, because X5 and X6 are, frankly, rather bad, and Mega Man 8, just people don't like it too much, so of your standard Mega Man games, that's the one that people think about for PS1, and the very last game that just missed the cut, we have Xenogears, um, very genre-defying game, yes, it's an RPG, but it also has a lot of, like, very deep plot elements, a lot of philosophy, a lot of just hardcore politics. It's a very, very over-the-top game. Heck, it even has a lot of uh, mech battles in it. So those were my games that uh, just missed the cut. So next up, I have my 20 games that I feel would make a full and complete and well-rounded PlayStation 1 Classic. I am going to go about these in alphabetical order. Number one by no means would be the game that I would, you know, have to have as number one. I will try to mention as I go through if I feel like it's a game that should be on everybody's list. I feel like there's probably five to ten games that I'm about to mention that really ought to be on everyone's PS1 Classic. Let me know below in the comments if you disagree with any of those, or obviously if you disagree with any of my list at all. So, number one, again, alphabetically, we have Ape Escape. Uh, Ape Escape, while it is a little bit dated uh, by today's terms, it really is a game that feels quintessentially Sony. It's a Sony-made game, and for those of us who were around during the PS1 days, it was the first game that many of us remember using and having to use the analog sticks. I specifically remember having to go and get an analog controller when we rented this game from, you know, Blockbuster, or we had a local video, Video Vibes was, is what it was called, um, and that was actually a, a really big deal, because, like, really no controllers had analog sticks before, so having to go out and pick up a controller that did that was actually rather odd and, and rather cool, so, you know, it's your standard platforming game where you go around just cap capturing these monkeys, but it uh, really has that Sony charm at the time that you saw from a lot of like just silly over-the-top first-party games. So again, number one, Ape Escape. Heading over at number two, here's a game that I do feel should be on everyone's list. We have Castlevania Symphony of the Night. It is not my favorite Castlevania in the in entire series, but it is definitely top three. I would definitely put that Castlevania 4 for Super Nintendo and Castlevania Bloodlines for Genesis as my top three. Um, there is no denying how fantastic Castlevania Symphony of the Night is. Uh, it came out rather early in the PS1's life. I believe it was a 1997 game, and the PS1 was out in 95. And despite being a two-dimensional game, it really had this unique kind of medieval or Baroque kind of art style. The, the music just felt oppressing in, in Dracula's Castle. And quite honestly, even though it stole straight off of... Uh, Super Metroid and became, you know, the genre became known as uh, Metroidvania, it, it just felt just super fresh. Uh, there was so much to do. There was so much to explore. It had RPG elements. You could get new weapons and armor and you could level up and it, it was just fantastic. And I do feel that that should be on everyone's uh, 
um, essential list for the PS1. Coming up at number three, we have Chrono Cross. Chrono Cross gets a lot of hate because it's not Chrono Trigger, and I understand Chrono Trigger was a Super Nintendo game that was made pretty much by an all-star team of you know developers and musicians and all that. So it really was almost like like a super group of video games, and people love Chrono Trigger. That is a uh, fact of life. Everyone loves Chrono Trigger. I personally like Chrono Cross a little bit better than Chrono Trigger simply because of all the different uh, branching storylines, all the different characters you can get. I love the battle system. It's turn-based, but it's very unique. And, um, <coughs> excuse me, there are not many RPG games out there that kind of, you know, blend the old school style of the turn base with kind of like a, a hip way of going um, about doing it. And uh, again, as I mentioned, there are so many branching paths. There are so many different ways you, you can go about the story is fantastic. It's not quite, I would say, a game that should be on everyone's, but it, uh, it, it deserves great consideration. Number four, we have Crash Bandicoot 2. Uh, I do feel like this is a game that should be on everyone's list, so this would be my second. That would be on everyone's list. Um, Crash Bandicoot 1, for anyone who hasn't played it over the last couple years, it's a very difficult to get into game. Um, it really shows its age nowadays. I feel like with Crash 2, they really hit, hit its stride and took all the parts that were, frankly, very annoying about Crash 1 and just made it a well-rounded, just amazing platformer it still is a great game even the standard ps1 i'm not even talking the the remake for ps4 uh crash 2 is really where it came into its own and just like a lot of um platformers slash games that you go and collect stuff i feel like it has the exact right amount of stuff and the exact right difficulty where you're not spending too much time going crazy there again i feel it should be on everyone's list number five we have dino crisis uh, Dino Crisis is you take Resident Evil and you put dinosaurs. It is very unique for a survival horror game, not only because of the dinosaurs, but it, if you play it, it doesn't really feel like any other Resident Evil game. The way you go about creating, um, <coughs> excuse me, the way you go about creating items and creating med kits is, is very unique. The puzzles are also very unique, although, in fairness, you do have to put a lot of pass keys in. Uh, it just has kind of a, a, a huge setting for a survival horror game and it's much more survival horror than you know zombies because it's much harder to get away from dinosaurs uh heading up with number six and this is a game i honestly feel should be on everyone's list and it's already on the playstation one classic is final fantasy 7 uh for anyone who knows me i have a very long love hate relationship with final fantasy 7 i love the game i hate that people say it's like the greatest game of all time that's just me that's just my personality that'll always be the case i've played ff7 probably more than any other game and i know more about it than probably any other game that i know about it's quintessential playstation one i mean it changed rpgs forever there's no reason to believe that that should not be on your list uh, number seven, we have Gran Turismo 2. Uh, this is one where if it, if I was creating my best of list, would absolutely not be on it. I'm not a huge fan of racing games, but I realize how big Gran Turismo 2 was uh, to the system. It had so much going for it. It had so much customization. It had so many races. It had so many cars. Um, and I believe, I'll have to double check this later, but I believe it's the best-selling PlayStation 1 game of all time. It's either Gran Turismo or Gran Turismo 2, and I have a feeling it's Gran Turismo 2. Now I'm talking better than Crash, better than Fa Final Fantasy, all that. Gran Turismo 2 is the highest selling. It's a Sony-made game, which is another reason is why it's just a quintessential game for it. And again, when people mention Gran Turismo, they usually go back to the PS1 days of where it really had its peak. Uh, number 8, we have Legacy of Kain Soul Reaver. Uh, this is... I believe one of the first games that we're talking about, kind of a 3D action platformer. Uh, it's not the first game in the Legacy of Kane series for the PS1, but it's definitely the one people remember best. Uh, the first one, um, Blood Omen Legacy of Kane, is a like Diablo clone that is very tough and very hard to get into. But Soul Reaver was a much more kind of like easy to easy, not only easy to get into, but it really showed you how. 3D worlds could be. It's not necessarily a super, super early PlayStation 1 game, but it really is a game when you say like a 3D platformer or 3D action game, it's definitely one of the first that comes to mind. So definitely deserves to be on the list. Number nine, we have Mega Man Legends. This is 
definitely one of my top three or top five PlayStation 1 games. Uh, and I think one of the reasons it needs to be on is not only is it a great game and not only is it a nice um, action slash platformer slash RPG, but it showed the world that Mega Man could do so much more than just the standard 2D, you know, running running left to right, which are fantastic, don't get me wrong. Uh, Mega Man Legend really showed that you could take a character and put it in a, in a different genre and really make it work. It's It's funny, it's cute, it has... Zaz, it has every good word you can you can you can think of for for you know every good adjective, you know pizzazz, all that kind of stuff. It it really has it. It still holds up to this day. Heading to number ten, this is one that's already on the list, and I feel like it should be on everyone's list. Is Metal Gear Solid? Metal Gear Solid changed everything about how games were viewed. At, how stories in video games were viewed. It changed everything. It had more uh, full motion video than any other game. It had more dialogue than any other game. It had more cutscenes. It had more, you know, fantastic voiceovers than any other game. It really, really changed um, how we look at games, um, not only in the stealth genre, but as a piece of art. Um, it's definitely one of those early ones where people started going, whoa! Games can be more than just running left to right and jumping on Goombas. Uh, it, they really can tell a complete and full story, and they really can be artful. So again, that's that's my third one that I would say, or excuse me, my fourth one that I feel should be on absolutely everyone's list. Number 11, we have Oddworld Abe's Odyssey. Not my genre particularly, but absolutely 100% deserves to be on the list. Um... Everybody remembers Oddworld Abe's Odyssey specifically very fondly. It's a puzzle platformer, uh, 2D puzzle platformer, and it just has that just great PlayStation 1 feel. The graphics are kind of that mixture of like 3D polygons, but also um, almost like hand-drawn two-dimensional kind of stuff. And again, like a lot of these games I'm mentioning and a lot of these first party Sony games, it had a lot of just charm, a lot of class, and it just it it, it just feels it just feels good to play it or even see someone play it. Number twelve, we have Parappa the Rapper. Um, not a great game in twenty eighteen by any means, but it's very important in the history of uh, Sony in general and the PlayStation. Uh, it's one of the very first Sony branded games on the PlayStation 1. It's not a very long game. It has six very short levels. Um, but, <coughs> excuse me, you cannot deny the charm that this game has. It is, it just, it feels right. It's cute. It's funny. Um, and again, like I mentioned with Ape Escape or, or Oddworld, it really, it really defined, you know, how we looked at these uh, these Sony-made games and these PlayStation One games, and frankly, music games. There certainly were weren't a lot of music games that really um, took any precedence, um, you know, up until Parappa came out, and after that, it, he became a uh, he became a household name. Number thirteen, we have Parasite Eve. Uh, Parasite Eve is definitely one of my top five, maybe ten favorite PlayStation One games. Uh, it's a great mixture of both horror and uh, RPG elements. Uh, it's almost like an action RPG uh, in battle, but then you have a lot of uh, just different different things you can collect and, and how you can get better and how you can um, just slowly just kind of get better as you go through. You have kind of magic powers as well. The story is crazy involving uh, mitochondria that, 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 that mutates and transforms that, you know, <laughs> if you were around the age back then, you had no idea what mitochondria were because you didn't take biology yet. And it was just all crazy and all over the place. It just feels PlayStation One, and it's honestly Square Enix at um, pretty much its 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 absolute max there. Uh, number fourteen. Here's another game I feel should be on everyone's list. We have Resident Evil Two. Uh, for those who know me, Resident Evil Two is by no means my favorite Resident Evil game. I prefer actually both Resident Evil One and Resident Evil Three on the PS One towards it. Uh, Resident Evil Three is actually my favorite uh, Resident Evil game, and I could just play it over and over and over. But we're talking about what would do best to encapsulate all that the PlayStation is, and frankly, Resident Evil 2 is more popular as well. Um, I'm, w what can be said about Resident Evil 2? It took, you know, the 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 
the subtle brilliance of Resident Evil 1 and the B movie that they made, because Resident Evil 1 is a B movie, and made it so much bigger, so much faster, so much easier to control. Uh, you had two different quests that you could go through, and after you beat the first quest, you realize that then you can play the the second quest as the other character. It's just, it, it, it defines horror games uh, for, the, for the PS1, and I feel it should be on everyone's list. Number 15, we have Silent Hill. It is one small step below Resident Evil 2 in terms of defining <coughs> horror defining games for the PS1. It's just a bit below, and the reason for that is it's a bit harder to get into than Resident Evil 2. Resident Evil 2 being much more action-oriented and a little bit like kind of hold your hand a little bit more than Silent Hill. Um, Silent Hill definitely deserves to be on the list simply because uh, it is probably the scariest game made on the system and likely top five scariest game of all time. It's still scary to this day. It goes to show you, you don't need fantastic graphics to create uh, a great atmosphere. The atmosphere is fantastic. The way the characters behave strangely is fantastic. Um, again, not quite as easy to get into as Resident Evil 2, but it really feels, feels correct. Uh, coming to 16, here's another game I feel should be on everyone's list. We have Spyro the Dragon. Uh, for those of you who watched my Let's Play on Spyro the Dragon, I feel like the very first one has just enough for you to collect to not be boring, but at the same point not have too much to do. Certain collect-a-thon games like Banjo-Tooie for the N64, for instance, have simply too much to collect, simply too much to do, and you get like a little overwhelmed. Spyro the Dragon 1 hits that perfectly for me, and because of that, I would choose that as the game to uh, on the Spyro series, because the Spyro is going to be on this, obviously, but I feel like Spyro 1 is the one that encapsulates um, the feeling of the PS1 best. 17, we have Tekken 3. This one's already been announced on the system. <coughs> so 3D fighting games, uh, early 3D fighting games did not age super well, but that being said, I feel like its importance in time and its importance in, in all that you could do on the game uh, warrants it's right on here. So I feel like Sony did make a good decision for putting Tekken on here. You need a fighting game on the PS1, and this was this was my choice uh, for it. Um, it was just one of those... Uh, there were so many good fighting games for the PS1. You absolutely have to have one on the PS1 Classic, and I would definitely go with the big namesake, uh, Tekken 3. Number 18, you have Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. Uh, for anyone who played... <coughs> excuse me, the Tony Hawk games back in the day, you know that um, 1, 2, and 3 were definitely, you know, the bee's knees. Uh, for the PlayStation 1, it, it came down to either 1 or 2 for me, and I feel like 2 has a little, little bit more going on in 1, but it doesn't take away from the game. Um, Tony Hawk came out on both the N64 and the PS1, but it is absolutely synonymous with the PS1 over the N64. There is no doubt about that in my mind, and you need to have a Tony Hawk game, specifically 2, on the uh, PS1 Classic. Number 19, here's another one I feel absolutely should be on everyone's list, and that is Tomb Raider 2. I will put an asterisk there and say I don't particularly like Tomb Raider games. They are not my style of games, but Tomb Raider 2 was so utterly important, and Tomb, Tomb Raider 1 is a very rough game. Tomb Raider 2 really um, smoothed out a lot of the edges, almost like a Crash 2 compared to a Crash 1. And absolutely, it is one of the 10, 10 games, if not 5 games, that's synonymous with the PS1. You absolutely need to have Tomb Raider 2 on that list. There is there is no ifs, ands, or buts about it. So that is, I believe, my 5th or 6th one that you absolutely need to have on it. And then lastly, and I'm going to put this as another one you absolutely need to have on the system, is Twisted Metal 2. Um, Twisted Metal 2 was kind of like Sony's answer to Mario Kart. You know, it was them saying, well, we're the PlayStation, we're more hardcore, we're, we're more for adults than the uh, N64, so here's, you know, almost like a racing game, but you just blow people up and you have the, you go all around the world and you have all these crazy characters and Sweet Tooth and Axel and all this, all these crazy characters and stuff going on, and it's very, very uh, synonymous with the PlayStation 1. It is definitely a game that needs to be on there. So, to go over the ones that I absolutely feel should be on everyone's list real quick before we sign off. Uh, the first is Castlevania Symphony of the Night. The second is Crash 2. The third is Final Fantasy 7. 
The fourth is Metal Gear Solid. The fifth is... I believe I said Resident Evil 2 needs to be on the list. If, if I didn't, then I do mean that Resident Evil 2 needs to be on everyone's list. The sixth is Spyro the Dragon. The seventh is Tony Hawk... Uh, I'm sorry, Tomb Raider 2. And the eighth is Twisted Metal 2. Those are the eight games that I feel should absolutely be on everyone's list. The other 12, I mean, the PlayStation 1 has 2,500 or 3,000 games that came out on the list. So there's a lot. There's going to be a lot of disagreement here. But out of the ones that, you know, not only are pretty decent to good games, but, you know, felt right with the PS1, I feel like this list hits it, um, you know, pretty dead on for me. So if there are any ones that you would change on there or that you would add on there, let me know below. Uh, if there is any thoughts about the PS1 Classic, about what they could do, you know, better or what they could do, you know, to reach your expectations, put it below. And even if you're just kind of curious about like, hey, I wonder if the N64 will, uh, Classic will come out or I'd like to also see the Sega Saturn Classic or the Turbo Graphics Classic, right? Because everyone's asking for those. Then you can put that below as well. Um, thank you so much for listening again. And uh, next time we'll be back with some more video game reviews. I know you're excited, and guess what? It's another adventure game. Aw, oh, yeah, folks. We'll see you next time. Thank you for listening.